Um, Marina, um, tell me how it was you came to do politics, but with fantastic humour, because the, both of your books are very funny. Well, I don't know. Um, I didn't set out to do politics in particular. With the first book, um, I thought I was going to write something sort of quite serious about the human condition, and um, you know, obviously a lot of it was about my family. And I ended up winning prizes for comic fiction, so I thought, mm, well, comic, this is obviously what people want me to be. So the next book, I thought, well, I'll write something funny. Um, and then I have been shortlisted for a political prize. So um, I think the only thing I should say is that I'm a member of the 1968 generation. I graduated in 1968, and it probably explains a lot. You too. <laughs> But, uh, it, but it, it, I can't believe that you didn't, in uh, the tractors, know that that was funny. Because, the, I mean, it's both quite funny and touchy. It seems to me that's, that's, mm. that's the... Well, I, I was greatly entertained by it when I was writing it, and that, obviously that's what kept me going. But I, It's a wicked sense of humour. But comic is such a funny label to pin on something. It, yeah. I think life is just like that, isn't it? Yes, no, th I mean, that's, that's, that, there was a kind of irony and uh, dry yes. deadpan. You're very good at, tell me how you got inside the voices of two caravans. That basically, the Eastern European voice is still the strongest one. Of course it is, yes, and I listen a lot, obviously. Um, I, well, the Ukrainian voice is the voice of my childhood, or the voices of my childhood. And the Poles as well, you know, we, we had, lot, had lots of Polish friends when I was growing up. Um, the Chinese girls, I actually, in my last few years at Hallam, taught a lot of Chinese students, and that's where I learned a lot of these things, and also I learned to listen. And my daughter is in Malawi, and so I've been over there a couple of times, and that's, in a way... So innocence comes from that. That really comes from that, yeah. Because one of the things that I think you do very, very brilliantly is also do this um, wonderful thing, really, which is people write letters... I can't think what you would be able to think of the Literary Association better, perhaps, than me. But people write letters in which you, the reader, know something else is going on. And it, it, it's very complicated. You have letters in the voice of yes. these people. Yes, I know what you mean. Um, it might be called being an unreliable narrator or something. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. The, the, did you start knowing that you were going to expose no. the oh. fruit-picking animal farming and the sex trade, did you know that those were what you had in your Not start? exactly, no. Um, my starting point was that somebody gave me a booklet called um, Ukrainians at Work in Britain Today. They said, oh, you'll be interested in this, you're Ukrainian. And it was um, a TUC publication from somebody who'd actually been trying to organise with Ukrainian workers. And, of course, I was completely gripped by it. And a lot of the detail about the pay and the conditions and how people worked was very precise and was in that book. Um, and I thought, oh gosh, this is a, the, the, there's a good story in this. And I suppose I also thought, looking for a subject to follow on from my first book, um, my own parents' migration um, was as a result of war. But actually, it's either war or work that makes people migrate, isn't it? It's, it's war or poverty. And I thought, well, if I hadn't been part of that migration, probably I would have been part of this migration. And then what would it have been like? So in a way, that was my starting point. I wanted to find out. Um, and I didn't quite know where it would take me. I certainly didn't set out to do an expose job on chickens. I thought I was going to do a kind of jolly romp about a couple of Ukrainians. Um, a lot of the other characters came on board almost by accident. Yes, and uh, the, other, the, other, the other thing that's very... I don't want to give the story away, but mm. it is a thriller. It has the, because you are so worried about the central character. Yes. All the way through. You yes, are, you are yes. just, she's not worried, mm. but you are so worried yes. for her. Yes, and of course there's a lot of that in Sheffield. In, in a way, Sheffield is the centre of the um, sex Which is where trade, you come from. Where I come from, is yes. It, it certainly is, yes. You're very, very aware of it on the streets, and it's where the, um, the headquarters of the anti-sex trade operation is, has been set up in Sheffield, I think partly for that reason. I know it seems odd, but these things don't happen where you expect them to happen. They ha and... The awful thing is that in Sheffield, they happen actually in the kind of industrial areas of the city. They don't even happen in the residential part of the city. I mean, there is a red light district, but actually a lot of the awful stuff goes on in massage parlours, which are kind of next to building yards and used car lots and sort of out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's really very horrible. And, you know, in a way, it's industrialised. It's in the middle of the industry, and it's also industrialised sex. No, I, I mean, I thought, I thought in that sense it was... I can say so, it was kind of pure all right, because it was, A, it was on real things that you obviously mm. had observed, mm. and secondly, it was a journey. 
Yes. <laughs> and then and then it was writing on the top of both of those. Yeah. Um, but but you what about that that the Chinese girls were also very frightening. They just disappear. They do. And that's I I, that's I could have done it differently, but actually that's that that was the right way to do it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And 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 people do disappear, of course. They do. And that and mm. that, that that comes over. Did did you I mean, you know, you just said you're a 68er. Mm. Do you think that that's... Um, I noticed that Timothy Partner actually, actually in Prospect, the special in Prospect, says the good thing about 68 was whether people got the politics wrong or right. They did remain fixed to politics, the older generation. Do you feel that? Um, yes, I do. I suppose I do, really. There's a particular way of looking at the world, isn't it? Yeah. You Where were you in 68? Um, Where did you graduate from? I was at Kiel, actually. Well, they were. Yes. They we, did, we did have our occupation. But I think I, I didn't actually, wasn't involved in the occupation because I was doing my finals or something terribly boring. But I think Kiel was one of those universities that reimagined knowledge. Yes, possibly it did. Yes, and it, in a way it, that it, we it did. We act, to yes, we act, I think this is true. And we had some wonderful um, staff who went along with it and with us and who sort of gave us the confidence in a way that we could really do this thing. Yeah. We, what, Who's your reader when you're writing? Who's your reader? I mean, I feel it's me. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> I really feel it's well, me. Well, actually, um, I have a colleague who I used to teach with called Paul, who is a Geordie with a terribly dry sense of humor. We used to teach together, and he was so cynical and, you know, sort of very, very dry. And he had this sort of way that if you did anything a little tad sort of sentimental or you're trying too hard, he would just kind of, his lip would curl a bit. And it's sort of imagining that that lip curling is a tremendous discipline. That, that's really interesting, mm. actually. Because sort of, it, it um, in a way, well, certainly, the, you know, I gave it to all my sister-in-laws for Christmas. So you, you, it can certainly go into, you know, into that but yeah, mm. it, I mean, it's got heroines, it's got mm. a very female sensibility, actually, yes. in some ways. And in a way, lots of the laughs are funny. I mean, mm. the inside the head of an Eastern European woman it's trying to find a good meal Yes. out of all. And I got a lot of stick in Poland for that. Did you? Why? Mm. They don't they didn't like to be, you know, they, they reckon that this business about Polish women being Catholic and into cooking is a stereotype that they want decency. to put behind them. All the way through. Of course it is, it's yes. Decency. It's, it's about of, cooking as a nothing. gift. Yes. She is producing, yes, I know whatever the limit is, she is mm, producing mm, civilised mm, decency. Mm. I love that, but they didn't see it that way. They thought that this was something they were trying to escape from. <laughs> uh, is there anything you'd like to say about being shortlisted or always? Oh, I felt, I mean, being shortlisted is really amazing. I felt so honoured to be longlisted. And when I looked at the people on the long list, I thought, blimey. Um, and then I suppose what I also thought is actually there isn't very much political fiction at all now. Um, and Let alone political fiction which is not earnest. Yes, I suppose so. In fact, a lot of writing is earnest anyway. Um, but and I learned... Movie and, I mean, I, I would say to me the great gift of your writing mm. is to treat the most serious subjects with all of the respect they deserve, but actually with all of the humorous, black, Humor of life. You know, it's years and years and years of um, having my manuscripts rejected. And in the end, I just thought, sod it. Um, I'm going to write what I want to write. I'm going to stop trying to sort of be noble and write in beautiful um, language and change the world and all the rest of it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to have fun. Well, um, I'd also like to say that you must read this book. You will enormously enjoy this book. There is the most magnificent dog in it. The dog um, is good. And you will laugh out aloud and you will be taught things you didn't know. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Thank you.